In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Simeon cried out, saying, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, in accordance with your promise, for my eyes have seen your salvation. January is the month of the year that travel agents tend to be their busiest, or at least that was the case nearly 15 years ago when I briefly worked for a travel agent. Over Christmas, families gather together, and the idea is that together they speak about their dreams and hopes for the coming year. And then in January, as the miserable weather sets in, at least in England, they book that dream holiday. They hope it to make, hope to make it a reality. Whilst it isn't a bad thing to want to see the world and experience something of God's beautiful creation, here in the Gospel we find a man with a very different set of priorities, a very different lifelong dream. The old man Simeon. How old is he? Maybe he's 80 years old, maybe 90, who knows? But it isn't that important. The interesting thing about him is his priorities in life. Sometimes you hear people talking about a bucket list, things they really want to do before they die. Simeon's bucket list was very, very short. There was only one thing on it, to see the Lord, to behold the Saviour in the flesh. And once he had done this, well, there was nothing else worth having or doing. His story reminds me of a lesser known saint of the Catholic Church, Blessed Emelda, she was a young girl of eight years old who, like Simeon, had only one desire in her heart, one mission, to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. What a saintly little girl. On the day of her first Holy Communion, she was so on fire with love for Jesus Christ that as she knelt back in her place, after receiving our blessed Lord for the first time, her soul must have leapt into the arms of our Lord, because she never arose from her thanksgiving. The Lord had called her to himself in that very moment. Along with Blessed Imelda, the same can be said of Saint Francisco Marto, the seer of Fatima, who was canonized not too long ago. His one desire during the long and painful illness of his was to make his first Holy Communion. And after receiving our Lord, he knew that his mission in life was complete, and he was called from this world the very next day. At last, O oh powerful master, give leave to your servant to go in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, the light to enlighten the Gentiles, the glory of your people Israel. All this is true, because the same Lord that the aged Simeon held in his weary arms, the one for whom we are made, the one in whom all our dreams are truly realised, he is here, truly present in Holy Communion. I remember reading St. Augustine, writing about all the beautiful things in creation that we want to see and explore and enjoy. He says all these beautiful things, all these things are desirable in as much as they reflect the beautiful one, God himself. All those dreams and resolutions, all those places you want to visit and things you want to do, if they are truly good and worthwhile, they are nothing but reflections of the beautiful one. Just as a ray of light can be refracted to show all the colours of the rainbow, so in Jesus Christ and in eternal life of him are all those hopes and dreams and wishes truly fulfilled. Oh, that we had eyes to see it. Oh, that our eyes could be opened like the disciples on the road to Emmaus when they recognised the hidden Jesus under the breaking of bread. The most defining moment in my life took place when I was 17. Up to that point, I had lived and behaved like any other worldly teenager, from a fairly lapsed home that went to mass occasionally. That's how I was, right up to the day, right up to the hour in which I received an extraordinary grace of conversion. My eyes were opened and I recognised Jesus Christ truly present at Holy Mass. I saw him as Holy Simeon saw him. My life was never the same again. I'm still a great sinner, but it is like Jesus shared with me a secret of his. Only it isn't a secret. It's the teaching of our Catholic faith. In Holy Communion, we can find it all. 
the fulfillment of all our dreams and desires and hopes because holy communion is communion with jesus for whom we are made as simeon held jesus in his arms he reached the culmination of his life its peak its defining point and that's how holy mass should be for us so holy mass is something serious and profound and life defining holy mass isn't some holy meal some community fellowship it is a moment in which the church corporately and as a whole joins in that prayer of simeon collectively we adore jesus made present collectively we put him at the center of our lives we ask him to lead us from this passing world to guide our souls safely through the sorrows of this life into the eternal kingdom of the blessed promise unlike simeon unlike blessed Imelda and saint francisco we don't just have one holy mass one meeting with our divine lord we aren't called from this world after the great moment of intimacy with our savior we have to come down from the holy mountain we have to return to our world but we should do so refreshed and nourished and enlightened enlightened about what our true priority is as we go into the next week enlightened as to our desired destination where we really want to go and the safest path to get there we can afford to lose everything else over the next week but we can't afford to lose this we need to bring this back to holy mass the following week and have it renewed and reinvigorated and fortified once again but my friends we should be in no hurry to leave the holy mountain let us stay on this mountain as long as we can as long as we're able to for simeon meeting the lord was the culmination of a lifetime our time with jesus at holy mass and especially in holy communion ought to be the culmination of something it shouldn't be trivial or routine or monotonous we should plan for it we should have intercession and prayers ready for that moment and that precious time shouldn't be invaded with noise or notices or word or worldliness instead in those moments we ought to join simeon in his holy adoration at last all powerful master you can give leave to your servant to go in peace according to your promise for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all nations a light to enlighten the gentiles and the glory of your people israel in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen.